started. Okay, so um, it's, I guess, uh, the second session of our third week here, which means we are halfway done with the quarter. Um, or I mean, I, I guess after today's class, we're halfway done with the quarter. And then uh, your midterm exam will be on uh, this coming Monday. So, uh, so today I'll um, finish chapter six, and you can expect uh, all the content that I've covered up through today to be um, to make an appearance on uh, Monday's exam. Okay, um, I think I've already written a few things, but um, but uh, I'll just write a little bit about the uh, the midterm. Okay, and so that will be on uh, Monday. Uh, August 26, and um, it will be multiple choice, okay, and I will provide um, kind of the, um, they're, they're not scantrons, but basically the equivalent, okay? So no need to uh, bring that. Uh, make sure you uh, bring your own calculator. Okay. Um, all right, and then, uh, yeah, I think, uh, I don't know if there's much else I have to say. Uh, and then the, the exam will take up the whole class session, although I imagine most of you will finish uh, faster. Um, I'm looking at around, somebody always asks, so we're probably looking around 50, 45 to 50 questions. Okay. And then you'll have basically a one hour, 45 minutes. Oh, and I'll also send out a, a seating chart. Okay. Um, I don't believe your seats are numbered, so I will just come up with some arbitrary numbering system for the uh, for the seats. Okay. So probably like. Generally, I'll start in the back and call that row A, and then as you move forward, it'll go A, B, C, D, E, F, G, whatever. And then, um, and then I'll label them as numbers so you can kind of count your way over to the seats, okay? Uh, and the reason I do the seating chart is because there was a, an incident a few quarters back that probably could have been avoided if I didn't let students pick their own seats. And so, um, so after I've started using seating charts, uh, um, a lot of those in types of, I haven't had uh, the similar kinds of incidents. So it seems to have helped. And, um, and that's how we how we'll go. OK. Um, just want to check. This whole column is left-handed seats. Is that right? OK. And um, all right, usually I'll just leave, um, well, it doesn't matter, but I generally leave the left-handed seats open, and you know, and then I just assign seats everywhere. And then, if you're left-handed, you can just move yourself over to the left-handed things. But is everybody in this column of seats already left-handed? No. Okay. All right. Just like to sit, have an aisle seat. All right. Well, um, I guess if you want me to assign you to a left-handed seat, uh, you can just come talk to me after class and I'll write your name down. Otherwise, we'll just kind of follow the, uh, you just get assigned and then if you want to move to a left-handed seat, you can move to a left-handed seat. Okay. Um, all right. Is that good? Any questions? No? We're good? How do we feel about um, the class so far? Thank you. Well, that's very generous of you guys to say. Um, okay. Well, um, then we'll uh, we'll continue right along, and uh, and we'll go. Oh, you know what? I'll do I'll do a favor for you guys. Also, um, you have uh, your third lab today in uh, in section section, and I generally make the labs do. 
I guess the the following Tuesday. Oh, but I'll give you a few extra days for this third lab because you've got the midterm on Monday. So um, I would say this weekend or whatever, this time after today, put your efforts into studying for the exam and then after the exam, finish up the lab. So I'll give you a few extra days for the, the lab. But um, if I don't update that by tonight, just send me a friendly reminder email and say like, can you change the due date to the lab? Um, sometimes I say stuff in class and then I forget about it. I try not to, but um, but that's what we've got going on. Okay, so I'll um, I'll just write. Um, I will extend deadline for lab three. Our due date. Okay. Um, Thank you to those of you uh, who can come to office hours with questions. I'm always happy to uh, answer all of your questions in office hours. Um, I'd, I'd much rather try to help you now than uh, than after exams and stuff. So, um, so I'll try to make um, uh, I'll, I'll probably make myself available either Thursday or Friday uh, for for office hours as well. Okay. Uh, all right, so um, we're in chapter six, and we're talking about probability distributions. Okay, and with uh, with probability distributions, the idea is you've got some kind of random scenario, random event, and the result of that random event uh, can be expressed numerically. Okay. We have some random event, and the outcome, the outcome is a number, or at least can be expressed numerically, OK? And so uh, I think we had an example where we said the um, the bus comes every 12 minutes, and then you get to the bus stop at a random time. How long do you have to wait? Okay, and then so we said, so you know, getting to the bus stop at a random time uh, is not your typical um, bus person schedule <laughs> or uh, typical bus rider behavior. People generally try to time their um, arrivals to coincide with when the uh, the bus indeed arrives, but. But basically, we said it might look something like this. And the fact that this height, the height of kind of your curve, uh, remains constant. Okay, and, and that indicates that all times between 0 and 12 are equally likely. And we could ask a question such as, what's the probability that you have to wait less than four minutes? Okay, and so uh, to answer this, we would come and we would probably split this up and I would draw a kind of a line at four and 
Less than 4 includes everything between 0 and 4. And so if we know that the total um, if the total area under this curve or in this shape here, if the total area is 1, how much is shaded blue? Okay. So that the total area of everything. always equals 1 okay and that and that's because something has to happen something this is all possible scenarios uh, and so that's the total area of everything that's equal to 1 and we will say the shaded area is kind of the uh, area less than 4 or I'll say between 0 and 4 Okay, is equal to one third. And so this area, which is one third, will be equal to the probability that we have to wait, wet, blah, we have to wait less than four minutes. So the shaded area is uh, one third, and that's going to be our probability. Okay, so it's really simple when your shapes are rectangles. How do we feel about this? It's good? Okay. Um, a lot of things do not have these nice rectangular shape. Okay. Oh, those of you who uh, arrived just a few minutes late, I, I passed out some tables here. And so um, come, and, come and grab a reference table. Okay. Um, okay, so not all distributions have uh, not all probability distributions are nice rectangles okay okay and so if your probability distribution is complicated has a has a strange shape you'd have to calculate the area under the curve probably using calculus. And that, that goes beyond the scope of this particular introductory statistics course, okay? So not all probability distributions are rectangles, okay? So I'm just gonna write more complex shapes, complex shapes and functions. Um, often require calculus which is not going to be covered here. Okay. Uh, there is an exception, though, and that is the normal distribution. Okay. So we will say, um, but an important, an important distribution important probability distribution is the normal distribution. Okay. And the normal distribution is continuous Continuous, it is unimodal and symmetric. All right, and it looks, and I think you guys have seen this, uh, it's often called a bell shaped curve. I guess the idea is if you imagine some kind of handbell. Um, you can imagine like sticking a handle here and then, I don't know, ringing, ringing some kind of bell like that. But um, don't, don't draw the handle on your... <laughs> okay, 
But anyway, that's that's kind of the visual um, that we've got as far as the um, the normal distribution goes. And uh, the idea is that um, in the middle we have the mean. Okay, so the mean goes in the middle, and it is the curve is the tallest at the mean, indicating that values at the mean are most common. <clears throat> most probable, okay? So uh, the curve is tallest at the mean, which <clears throat> indicates values near the mean are most probable. And whereas you have values um, larger than the mean, um, they are less probable. Okay, and so are values, you know, lower than the mean. Are also less probable. Okay, so you kind of have, you know, values near the middle, near the mean, kind of in this zone, are highly probable, and then values down here are less probable, values over here are less probable, and everything in between. And technically, these are asymptotic, okay meaning that um, you can go up to positive infinity and go down to negative infinity, and the probability is not zero, but for uh, you know most practical purposes, we can treat them as zero, okay? It's, the normal distribution is, says it's technically not impossible, but in a lot of cases, they are. All right. And so um, I'm going to start off with what we will call the standard normal distribution, okay? Standard normal distribution, it is also known as the Z distribution okay and the idea with the standard normal distribution is that um, it has a mean equal to zero and the standard deviation is equal to one and so if we draw the standard normal distribution, it will look kind of like this, right? In the middle, we put zero. This is our mean. Okay, and then um, right around here is one, here is two, here is three. Uh, one, two, negative one, negative two, negative three. These should probably be closer to closer to the uh, axis. Okay, something like that. Okay, this is our standard normal distribution. Technically, when we are talking about the standard normal distribution, because it is continuous, the probability of getting any one exact number is going to be zero. Okay, which is a little bit strange. Strange to uh, might might feel a little strange, but the idea is, um, you know, let's just say, you know, 
I don't know, let's say the weight of some like, cats are normally distributed or something like that, okay? And you might ask like, well, how, how much does your cat weigh? And you might say it weighs 11 pounds. But technically, if we had a very accurate scale, your cat might weigh something like 11.112768 pounds or something like that. And so if we say, what's the probability that a cat weighs 11 pounds? We're saying, what's the probability that a cat weighs exactly 11.00000000 pounds? And the probability that any random cat weighs exactly 11 pounds with infinitely many zeros and we have the most accurate scale in the world, um, or I guess that we could even possibly imagine, the probability that we get any kind of cat that weighs that exact amount is, is zero, okay? Now, just to kind of keep our life simple, we often just round off to the nearest pound and, uh, and thus when we say my cat weighs 11 pounds, we're really saying the cat weighs something in between like 10 and a half and 11 and a half pounds, okay? And I think that's fine. Nobody really, I mean, I, nobody really cares um, that when you report the weight of your animal that you're really saying it's within some range. But, um, but we have to think that just, um, you know, at least when it comes mathematically speaking, when we're asking what's the probability of getting any one exact number, um, that, that probability is zero if we're talking about the normal distribution, okay? And we're talking about like, uh, I think we had like some other probability distributions such as like, you know, um, if you roll the die, you win five bucks or you lose four bucks or something like that. Um, of course, you can get, what's the probability of rolling the number three exactly? That, that happens in, a, in what we would call a discrete distribution, okay? But anyway, so um, because the normal distribution is continuous, the probability of any one exact value is zero, okay? So the probability of getting an exact particular value with however many decimal places behind it is, uh, is zero, okay? So we always talk about probabilities of some range of values, okay? Uh, so we always report a probability of a range of values. and the normal distribution. Okay, so let's just start off with the uh, easiest question. And if I just say, um, I select, uh, I draw a number, draw a random value, from the Z distribution, Okay, our standard normal distribution. And I ask, what is the probability that it is less than zero? Okay, or just to kind of this entire pair of sentences and the sentence in question, when I say I draw a random value from the z distribution, what's the probability that it is less than zero? I can also just write what is the probability that z is less than zero. Okay. All right, and so visually, I draw a line at zero and I shade in. Is this going to work? Let me see if I can use the bucket to, to fill this in. Oh, great. Okay. So I shade in everything to the left of zero. And how much have I shaded in? One half, right? So our answer here 
is 0 0.5. Okay. Is that okay? Uh, okay, so if taking take into account this kind of uh, statement that I made earlier, that the probability of any one exact value is zero, um, what is the probability that z is less than or equal to zero? It's also the same. It's also going to be 0 0.5, okay? So there's, there's no difference between for the normal distribution, okay, and I have to distinguish this from the discrete ones, okay, for a continuous normal distribution, the probability of getting less than zero or less than or equal to zero are, are exactly the same at 0.5. Okay, is that all right? All right. Um, what if I said, what is the probability that z is greater than zero? Not a trick question, okay? It's exactly what you think it is, and that's 0.5, okay? But how did I get that? We would say probability that z is greater than 0 <coughs> is equal. They are their complements, okay? I mean, we could just look at the picture, but I could also just say that the, the probability that z is greater than 0 is the probability that z is less than or equal to 0. So that's going to be 1 minus 0 0.5, which is 0.5. Okay. All right. Let's um, let's try this some more. All right. Do you guys remember the empirical rule? You guys remember hearing it <laughs> at least? Okay. So maybe you don't remember the rule itself, but. Uh, the empirical rule, we call this the 68, 95, 99.7 rule, okay? And, and it's technically, um, it should be the approximately 68, 95, 99.7. And do you guys remember um, what these numbers 68, 95, 99, 7 corresponded to? We said something along the lines uh, that around 68% have what? Z-scores between 1 and negative 1. Does kind of, I hope, maybe. Well, I'm telling you now. So um, approximately 68% of data have Z-scores between 1 and negative 1. Okay, I might have said uh, approximately 68% of data um, are within one standard deviation of the mean, which translates to z-scores, okay? 95% of data have z-scores between 2 and negative 2, and 99.7% have z between 3 and negative 3. These numbers, the empirical rule, come from the normal distribution. <clears throat> empirical rule values are based on the normal distribution. Okay, so let's uh, let's just let me just kind of draw this out here. And so here I'm going to put a 0 here, and a 1, and a 2, 3, minus, minus, should be really good. Okay, and the idea here is that if I go between 1 and negative 1, and this is supposed to be 68%. Um, Whoops. about, okay, and um, between 2 and negative 2, if I color those in, I 
from here to here, we have about 95%, okay? And then so on and so forth up to three and negative three, you would get 99.7, almost everything. Okay, so what if I ask, uh, or all right, so let me just kind of sum this up also. I can just say probability that negative one is less than or equal to z, less than or equal to one is um, about 0.68. Probability that go from negative two to two is about 0.95. And the probability of uh, negative three is around 0.997. Okay. Um, so here's a question. What is the probability that z is um, between 0 and 1? We would say this is about <coughs> 0.34, right? Because it's going to be half of 68, okay? So if I draw like a tiny little Z, Z curve, okay? I'm going from 0 to 1, and I'm asking how much, how much is shaded in here, okay? And so this, this is half... Of 0.68. What if I ask, what's the probability that z is greater than 1? And what would you guys say? All right. So, so maybe um, we can just ask. Well, how? What's the probability that z is greater than zero? Okay. The probability that z is greater than zero is one half. Okay. And now I'm asking, what's the probability that z is greater than one? Okay, so if we've got <clears throat> half of it is greater than zero, and we got 34% is between zero and one, how much is greater than one? Around 16, around 16%, okay? And so the kind of the, the visual picture here is that this is about point, this is point 0.5 and this chunk here is point 0.34 and point 0.5 minus point 0.34 is point 0.16, right? So this chunk that I have down here. Is that okay? But things get, um, but we might not always have z-scores where um, 
we have nice even numbers like one, two, or three, or something like that, uh, we might get we might encounter um, strange uh, z values. Yeah, I apologize for the way these things printed. You gotta flip them on the short edge. Um, so let's say I've got the normal distribution. And if I draw a line at zero and I shade everything to the left, I'd get 50%. But what, and if I shade uh, everything to the left of one, I get something around 84%. But what if, um, what if I come to some arbitrary line? Like I say, z is equal to 0.42. And I want to know what is the probability that z is less than 0 0.42. So what is this? What is this area over here? So this is where we use the Z table, okay? This table that I just passed out to you guys, all right? And, and again, if you got here a few minutes late and didn't get a table, um, I've got tables up here in the front, all right? And so we say this number 0 0.42 is, uh, is made up of basically 0 0.4 plus 0 0.02, okay? And so um, we're going to look up the row 0 0.4 and the column 0 0.02. So you're going to have to flip to the, um, the positive side of the table. So one side has all negative values in that column of z's, and then the other uh, has positive values. Okay. And so if I look up 0.4 and 0 0.02, the value I see there is 0.6628. Okay, 0.6628. All right, and so that tells us that the area to the left, the probability that z is less than 0 0.42 is 0.6628, okay? Which makes sense because I know that this number has to be greater than 0.5 because everything to the left of zero is 0.5 and I've got a little bit more than one half. So I'm, I've got around 66% right there, okay? Um, if I ask what's the probability that z is greater than 0.42, So this is the green area. The answer here is 0 0.6628. What is the answer uh, over on this side? So maybe I'll shade this side and um, orange or something. OK. So in orange, what is this the area over here? The area on this side will be what? Everything has to add up to 1, so the area on this side is going to be 1 minus 0.6628. Okay, so this is going to be 0 0.3372. Okay. <coughs> Does that feel good? Feels fine. All right, let me just give you a few um, practice problems then, okay? And, uh, and so for each of these, um, I would say, 
kind of draw the Okay, so I'm going to just ask, what is the probability that z is less than um, ne negative 1.4? What's the probability that z is less than negative 1.04? What's the probability that z is greater than positive 1.04? Okay, go ahead and take a take a minute or so to uh, to answer these questions so zero always goes in the middle and then just pay attention to whether we're talking about the left hand side or the right hand side all right well let's take a look here okay so here I have z is less than negative 1.4 Okay, so I'm going to um, draw a line over here on the negative side, and I want to know what is the probability that z is less than this um, this area, or not z is less than this area. I want to know what this area is where z is less than negative 1.4. Okay. So when I look this up, I'm going to I have to be on the negative side of the table. And we're going to go to uh, negative 1.4. And there's no value given over here. It's just it ends at 1.4. So it's technically negative 1.40. And so I will go to the row negative 1.4 and the column 0, 0 and I get 0 0.0808. Okay, so that's our answer there. Okay, so 8% basically. All right, um, for here, what's the probability that z is less than negative 1.04. So I'm going to go to the row 1.0. So here, here's my picture, negative 1.04. I go to the row negative 1.0 and the column 04. And my answer there is 0.1492. Okay, and then final question. I'm at positive 1.04. And I come over here and I look up how much is greater than positive 1.04. Okay, so when I look at this value up, 1.04 in the table, it gives me 0 0.8508, okay? So it says this side is 0.85, whoa, something happened here. Okay, it's like, um, okay, I guess, uh, Okay, 0.8508. Okay, so I've got 0.8508. Uh, it's important to note that the table, the Z table, always gives the area to the left. To the left of Z. <coughs> Okay, 
So here I looked up uh, positive 1.04, and uh, we got 0 0.8508, which means this area above has to be 1 minus 0 0.8508. And what do you know? You get 0 0.1492. Okay, is that good? So our answer here is 0 0.1492 as well. Okay, and so this um, this brings a a useful property of the z table. Okay, in that uh, you know technically. Because it's symmetric, you technically only need one side of the table. Now, uh, for convenience, I'll give you both sides of the table. Um, but technically, you only need one side because you can kind of do a little bit of uh, a little bit of arithmetic here and figure out um, exactly what what value you should have. But um, kind of a a useful shortcut, you know. And the thing about shortcuts is you should only use them if you're comfortable with them, okay? And that's for all of life. Uh, if you're not comfortable with using a shortcut, doing a shortcut, don't do it, right? You're more likely to make a mistake if you do a shortcut. But uh, we can always say the area to the right of z is equal to the area to the left of negative z, okay? And so here we said, what is the probability that z is greater than 1.04? And this is equal, is equal to the probability that z is less than negative 1.04, right? And we saw this. We have 1.04, and here we have negative 1.04. And you could just imagine that because the, because the thing is symmetric, you can imagine just um, you know, kind of flipping this around. So when you've got this, and then you flip it around the other way, and so the area to the right over here is going to be equivalent to the area to the left of over here. But of course, um, you know the safe method, safe method non-shortcut is to just say, uh, you know, find the area to the left of z. and then subtract that from 1 to get the area to the right of z. OK? All right. Uh, and we've been dealing with the, uh, the standard normal table. And the uh, amazing thing about the normal distribution is that all normal distributions have the exact same shape and proportions if you standardize them. Okay? So here we've just been talking about this hypothetical standard normal which has a mean of 0 and standard deviation of 1. But the reason why the normal distribution is so useful is that it pops up in a lot of things in nature. Okay? So um, as far as human height goes, height is generally normally distributed, OK? Uh, all of these things with kind of your um, skeleton and stuff like that. So if you do things like uh, the length of your, uh, your arm and length of your femur and things like that, 
those are all normally distributed, okay? Um, a lot of things as, as far as plants go, those often follow normal distributions. And, uh, and so a lot, of, a lot of things in nature follow normal distributions, okay? Um, yeah, a lot of uh, yeah, observations in nature. normal distribution okay so um, in the United States okay um, we'll say the height of adult males or maybe we'll say adult men okay this will be uh, all men self-identified men uh, the height of adult men is basically normal, okay, with a mean of, uh, for simplicity, I'm going to say um, 69.5 and standard deviation of 3 inches, okay. I think the actual values are a little bit different from that but we'll use just some nice numbers for now, okay? Okay, so this is different from the standard normal where the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one, okay? However, if you take a measurement and you turn it into a z-score, you can use, um, use the values uh, from the Z table to answer our questions, all right? So, um, so what we have here is we've got, you know, here's our normal distribution. The mean is 69.5, and I can go up one, two, three standard deviations. If I go one standard deviation above, okay, so if I say this is a standard deviation. Um, when we're talking about the normal distribution, the symbol for the mean is mu. Okay. And the symbol for the standard deviation is sigma. Okay. And uh, yeah, we pronounce this, there's like a hidden Y there. So we've got um, a mean of 69.5, that goes right in the middle here. And if I go one standard deviation above, where would that take me? Exactly, 72.5, right? I think I heard somebody say that. Um, and then if I go up two standard deviations, that would take me to 75.5, all right, hang in there, you guys. Um, and, uh, and, then, and we can go the other way, all right? And, uh, and here's the amazing thing. I could ask a question such as, what proportion of adult men in the U.S. are shorter than, let's say, uh, 72 inches. So this is six feet. Okay. I think there's somehow six feet. Okay. Um, so this is where we go, and we want to know what proportion of adult men in the U.S. are shorter than 72 inches. Now, from looking at this, it's, it's a little bit difficult to say because um, 
we can say about 50% are shorter than 69.5 and about 50% are taller than 69.5, but 72 inches, that's a little, it's a little hard to ga gauge, okay? So 72 is a little bit lower than 72.5, all right? And so we've got, um, I'll just come and color this in. All right, and so we wanna kinda get an estimate of what proportion is lower than 70, whoops, don't wanna do that, um, lower than 72, okay? So we're gonna say, what is the probability that a height, okay, when I say height, I'm talking about heights of adult men in the US <laughs> is less than 72, okay? So what's the probability that the height is less than 72? We can uh, make this equivalent to a problem that we are able to answer by converting the height into a z, okay? So rather than the height, we will turn it into a z-score, okay? So I have to change 72 into a z-score. So we will convert 72 to a z-score, all right? Do we remember what a z-score is? It is our distance or deviation from the mean, but recorded in standard deviations. Okay. So how do I go about finding our z-score? We are going to take our value, our x, and we'll subtract off the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So we do 72 minus 69.5 divided by 3. And I don't know what this number is. 2.5 divided by 3. Let me just pull up the calculator. Uh, it's 0 0.83. Okay. But But I'll go ahead and I'll, uh, I think, if we round off to two decimal places, 0 0.8. Okay, so if I do 72 minus 69.5, uh, and then I ask, what's that divided by 3? Okay, I get five sixths, and then um, let's convert that to decimal, and I get 0 0.83333. But when we look this up in the Z table, we have to just round off to two decimal places, okay? So we're gonna ask, what is the probability that Z is less than 0 0.83 in our table? And our answer there is 0.7967. Okay. Okay. How do we feel about that? Good? All right. So let me uh, just ask you, uh, I'll give you another example. Try the same thing. So we will say, so one, uh, a shortcut, a shorthand way. Uh, saying the same thing is to say a uh, height <coughs> follows a normal distribution with mean 69.5 and standard deviation 3. So this is to say <coughs> normal distribution mean is 69.5 Standard deviation is three, okay? So we're gonna say height, we'll say US adult men, okay? Um, okay, so I'm gonna ask what, um, 
what proportion of men are shorter than, let's say, 5 foot 11. Okay, so this is 71 inches. So go ahead and, uh, and take a moment to find the proportion of U.S. adult men that are shorter than 5 foot 11. Okay, and what do we get? Uh, so our answer is 0.6915. Is that what we got? Okay, so if we put 69.5 in the middle and, um, and I draw a bar at 71, okay, then um, we want to know what is the probability that height is less than 71. And so we'll convert 71 to a z-score. So we have z is equal to 71 minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we have 71 minus 69.5 divided by 3. We get 1.5 over 3. And we get z is positive 0.5. And so this is equivalent to asking what is the probability that z is less than 0.5. And we look up 0 0.50 in the z table. And so we'll look this up. And the area to the left, 5 z equal to 0 0.50 is 0 0.6915. It's about a little under 70%, something around there, okay? It's just a coincidence that this value 69.5 and 0.6915 looks similar, but unrelated. Okay. Um, all right, and then so kind of maybe one more type of question that you might see is what proportion or, you know, what is the probability that a randomly chosen uh, adult male in the U.S. is between... So we'll say between 5'11", which is 71 inches, and 6 feet, 72 inches. Okay. And so um, we've already done the work to answer this question. 
basically, uh, the, we are asking for what proportion or what is the area oops, between uh, in this kind of uh, chunk in the middle here. Okay, So this is the area between 71 and 72. Okay, and so the way we're going to do this is we're going to take everything to the left of 72 and we're going to subtract everything to the left of 71. And I already forgot what we wrote down. <laughs> um, so we uh, from the previous slide, the area to the left of 71, probability that z is less than 70, not 70, uh, that probability that height is less than 71. This was 0 0.6915. And over here, the probability that the height is less than 72, what was that? Um, 0.7967, is that right? Okay, so, so this area is 0.7967, everything to the left of 72, and then everything to the left of 71 is 0.6915, okay? And so therefore this, area. So we would say the probability that 71 is less than the height is less than 72. This is equal to the probability that height is less than 72 minus the probability that the height is less than 71. Okay. So I do 0 0.7967 minus 0.6915. And what is that? 0 0.1052. So about 10%. About 10%. percent, I guess. Okay. Uh, assuming these numbers and values are are all correct. Okay? All right, you can expect to see some questions like this appear on, uh, on the midterm exam, given some, uh, I think I've put some practice problems uh, up on the uh, course web page as well. All right. Um, let's Try a, try a different approach, okay? Or a different kind of problem as well. Can I flip the slide? We're good? Okay. So, so here we've been talking about, you know, what is a uh, height of, uh, I mean, uh, what pro proportion is this? Uh, you know, what proportion of adult men in the U.S. Are, are under this height and things like that? We could ask um, for heights corresponding to percentiles, okay? So we could go the other way, all right? So um, um, this might be called, um, you know, figuring out a measurement based on a given probability or percentile. Okay, so let's say you're, um, I don't know, a hat company, and um, I actually, I don't know, head measurements, but let's say you're going to sell a hat and you want to make sure you can fit like 98% of customers, okay? Um, and so, um, so maybe you're okay if the biggest 1% of heads 
won't fit, like the hat won't fit on, and maybe the smallest 1% of heads, it'll be too big for them or something like that, okay? So we're gonna figure out measurements. Um, so we wanna know, um, so what size um, must a hat accommodate if it is to fit 98% of people's heads. <laughs> okay, so that means um, basically um, the max size, so here, let me just kind of draw my picture. <coughs> So what I want is I want to know, so here I'm going to have 0.98 and I'm going to have 1% over there and 1% over here. Okay. So the max size will be the 99th percentile of head size. Okay. 99th percentile means 99% of people have heads that are smaller. Okay. So that means, you know, still 1%, which is a non-trivial amount, but 1% of people will not fit because it's too because the hat their head is too big. And then um, on the other hand, the minimum size will be the first percentile. Okay? which means 1% uh, of people. The hat will not fit because their heads are too small. Okay, but I, unfortunately, as soon as I started this example, I realized I don't know how big heads are supposed to be. Let's see if uh, Google can help us. All right, head circumference. say average head circumference. Oh, I've got no internet. Maybe. What is the average head circumference? Um, okay, 23 inches. Wait, for a newborn? No, I don't want for a newborn. Wait, no, I have no idea. Head, what, okay. What is the average head circumference of an adult? Oh, maybe it's still 23 inches? Okay. All right, but I've got no nothing on standard deviations. Okay. What is the normal head? These are, uh, okay, no, these are newborn. All right, we don't want that. People are worried always about their body measurements. Don't worry about your body measurements, all right? Okay. Um, what am I saying? 99th percentile, first percentile. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. okay. So, um, all right, so we're. right, I'm just gonna make up numbers, okay? So we will say the mean is 23 inches. Okay, I have no idea. I would like to take some string and wrap around. I should have, uh, oh, you know what? Mine's like 22 because I had that, my daughter made that crown, right? And all she did was take uh, two pieces of paper and taped them end to end. Okay, all right. 
So I know my head circumference, right? At least the way that, that crown is fitting. Okay, so I'm a little below the mean for head circumference. All right, so the mean is 23 inches, and let's say um, standard deviation. I really have no idea. Let's, let's just call it 1.2 inches, all right? I'm completely making this up, all right? So these are like the standard deviation. This is a completely made up number, all right? <coughs> made up, don't, don't fact check me, please, okay. I mean, you can, and you can tell me what, what the standard deviation really is, but I have no idea. Okay, ah, it's probably 1.2 is too big. Let's, let's change this up. Uh, let's go 0 0.8. Just for fun, all right. Okay, so we'll say the mean is 23, the standard deviation is 0 0.8 inches. Okay, so now we want to find what is the 99th percentile of head circumference and what is the first percentile of head circumference. Is that okay? So this is what we wanna do. So what is the 99th percentile? Because we want our hats to stretch up to that size and what is the first percentile? And we want our hats to go down to that size. Okay, so we're going to say um, mean 23, standard deviation 0 0.8, well, again, normal distribution. Okay, so we're going to ask what is the 99th percentile? Who has a big head? Are there any celebrities with like famously large heads? Yeah. Rihanna? Okay. Well, I don't, you know, forehead's different from like the rest. I don't know, you know? I like Rihanna. All right. <laughs> I, I actually enjoyed. Um, what was that movie? Ocean's Eight? Ocean, whatever. Okay. Um, don't judge me. All right. 99th percentile. So, okay, so uh, the mean is 23 here. And what we want is we want to know, uh oh, what just happened? Something happened. <laughs> Okay. All right. Okay. Well, I, at least it saved my work before crashing on me here. Okay. So, what is the 99th percentile? Um, okay. So, we're going to put 23 in the middle here. And I want to know what is this value here so that I have 0.99 on this side. And this side is 0.01, right? That's what I want to know. Okay, so let's start by asking, what is the z-score that will give me 0.99, okay? So what z-score gives me 0.99 uh, for the area to the left? Okay, and um, did you guys find anything? So, so here's the, when we uh, go to our Z table, what we wanna do is we wanna look for a value close to 0.99, okay? Do not, do not go to 0.9, do not look up Z equals 0.99, okay? because that will give you what, 0.8389 or something? That's not what we're looking for. We're asking what z gives me 0.99, okay? And so the closest value is 0.9901, yeah? We'll see that, 0.9901.
Now sometimes the closest value is a little bit bigger and sometimes it's a little bit smaller. In our case it's a tiny bit bigger. Okay, and this corresponds to 0.23 in the row 2.3 2 and the column 0.3. Okay, so what z-score gives me 0.99 for the area to the left? That's going to be z is equal to 2.33. So, so here I've got z is equal to 2.33. And so now what I need is I need to know what head circumference corresponds to a z-score of 2.33. Okay, so what head circumference gives me a z-score of 2.33? Okay, so um, let me just kind of write off, write out the kind of the equation that we're using. So we have z is equal to kind of our x minus the mu, which is mu divided by sigma. And what I have here is I know my z, my z is 2.33. The x, that's the value I don't know. So I'm going to leave that as an x. And I do know my mean, which is 23, and I know my uh, standard deviation, which is 0 0.8. Okay, and so now I just solve for x. Okay, so just with a little bit of algebra, I've got 2.33 times 0.8 is equal to x minus 23, and then I get x is equal to 23 plus 2.33 times 0.8 and what is that? 2.33 times 0.8 plus 23 that's not helpful 24.864 okay 24.864. Okay, and um, is that okay? All right, why don't you guys try out finding the first percentile, the one percent for hat sizes. So again, so we're going to say head circumference Okay. All right, what do we get? 21 point one, one, yeah, one three, no, let's see, uh, one three six, is that right? Or one six, okay. 
maybe. All right, well, let's let's take a look. All right, so what is, so when we do, uh, what is the first percentile? We want to find the Z. So first we got to find the Z that gives 1% one per, uh, one to the left. Okay. And so technically we can just take advantage of the fact that it's symmetric, but, but let's go through the process, okay? So we want to find area closest to 0.01, okay? And so we go on to our negative side of the table and uh, the closest area I have is 0 0.0099, which corresponds to negative 2.33. So it's in the row negative 2.3 and the column 0.03. And so this is going to be z equal to negative 2.33, okay? Now, um, it's not a coincidence that when we did the 99th percentile, we had positive 2.33, and that's because the table's symmetric, right? So if we got 99% to the left of 2.33, which, which means we'll have 1% above, um, we can flip that around, we'll also get negative 2.33. But, but anyway, um, so in this case, we go down to negative 2.33, okay? And we get um, 0 0.0099. Did, did you get a slightly different Z? Okay, um, yeah, so yeah, so a lot of these things we got to just uh, be a little careful just because sometimes the there, there's a lot of values that are similar, but um, but close. Okay, so we get uh, z is equal to negative 2.33, and that's going to be the z that gives us the closest uh, value there, okay? And now we want to find um, the uh, circumference. that gives uh, z equal to negative 2.33, all right? So again, I've got z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. I'm going to say negative 2.33 is equal to x, which I do not know, minus the mean of 23 divided by the sigma, which is 0 0.8. Okay, and then so solving for x will give us 23 minus 2.33 times 0.8, and if I do this, and I just insert a negative sign here, should work, okay, okay, and I get 21.136, okay, and so our original question was, how, uh, what size heads does this hat need to accommodate? I would say the hat needs to adjust from 21.136 to, I already forgot what my other answer was. Um, 24.864 which is okay and that kind of lines up with I don't know I made up these numbers so I wouldn't be surprised if they don't line up with reality at all but uh, but if you you know if you think of like one of those baseball caps where the they have that that plastic that adjusts in the back I feel like it adjusts from in the realm of around three and a half inches or something and that seems to accommodate uh, about 99 percent of heads and of course some people their heads are too big won't fit in the hat and some people you like try to make it as small as possible but it, it's still loose right usually like it's because you're a kid and your head hasn't grown fully um, but but that's what we got okay um yeah, it's already 11.40. Okay, how do we feel about all of this? Normal distribution stuff. Okay, so this will definitely appear on the uh, the midterm exam. Um, so other stuff that, um, that I want, um, I've mentioned here. I've put a few things on CCLE. Uh, 
again. Okay, so I'll, um, I have to get six, chapter six homework for the third edition up. Um, and then I put, uh, put a few practice questions here, okay? Now don't, um, most of these are a little bit kind of, most are semi-calculation based. Uh, there will be a handful of maybe definition or concept questions that come from kind of chapter one when we first started introducing data. I, I didn't have, I didn't make up practice questions for those. Uh, but you know, things, things where I talked about kind of big picture stuff where I said, you know, we can make predictions for kind of the averages, but not individuals, you know, what's the difference between a observational study and a controlled experiment and anecdotal evidence and things like that. So, uh, so make sure you kind of review um, that section of the, uh, the notes and lecture as well. Um, and I would say, yeah, the, the questions are, I, I think it hits each, all, all six of these chapters, I don't want to say uh, with equal measure, because uh, I don't want somebody going through and counting exactly how many questions I've, I've asked, but definitely you want to make sure you, you've got a good handle on kind of the regression stuff with the, uh, the slope and the intercept and those interpretations and being able to, to read the output, make predictions, find residuals. Um, chapter five stuff, uh, where you, know, you, you had some, some of these, hang on you guys. Um, some of the stuff was covered on uh, Monday's quiz, but we also covered a few other things uh, since that, that wasn't on Monday's quiz, such as the, um, you know, if, uh, if I draw marbles from the bag 10 times, you know, what's the probability I get like four blue marbles or something like that, um, where you have to figure out the uh, number of arrangements and things, things like that. Um, you can expect, uh, you know, a few questions like that to appear and things like that. Um, anyway, uh, good luck as you guys study and we'll see you guys on, uh, on Monday for the exam uh, and I'll send out a, a seating chart uh, probably sometime over the weekend, so, uh, so be on the lookout for that. Okay, good luck as you guys study.